I've been a solo artist for the majority of my musical career. Obviously, making music doesn't happen in a vacuum. There are producers, collaborators, session musicians. If you're working with a label, you'll be interacting with people there. If you're self-releasing music, then maybe at some point you'll decide to rely on the skills or experience of someone else to take it up a level. Do not get me wrong. I can and do enjoy playing with others. I've played in plenty of bands, music groups, including string quartets and orchestras over the years. And I believe that collaboration is the best way of becoming a better musician. You know the rule. Be the worst player in the room. But I've always known that I wanted to be a solo artist and have complete control over the direction of my music. Does that make me an egomaniac, a narcissist, or does it mean I have a vision? that I know what I want. So I thought I'd take a look at a few different artists who went solo and see what I can learn from them. George Harrison was just 15 when he met John Lennon and Paul McCartney. For many of us, playing in your first band with other teenagers is how you learn to play. But when the group becomes globally famous and contains two of the best songwriters the world has ever seen, then your own contributions are likely to be pushed aside. George got stuck with being the Beatle that had to fight to get songs on records because of Lennon and McCartney. Well, who wouldn't get stuck, Bob Dylan said in a 2007 interview. Harrison wrote some of the Beatles' best songs, While My Guitar Gently Weeps, Here Comes the Sun and Something, but he still felt constrained by his position. His friendship with Bob Dylan further convinced him that he had no future in the group that made him an international star. His final recording session with the Beatles was on the 4th of January 1970. Harrison's solo career has two high points for me, All Things Must Pass and Cloud Nine. All Things Must Pass is a triple album, mostly comprising of the songs that he'd written during his Beatles years that never got past Lennon and McCartney. Harrison described it as a very happy occasion. He finally had a chance to express his songwriting as he wanted it. Harrison still enjoyed playing with others, though, forming the Travelling Wilburys with Bob Dylan, Jeff Lynne, Roy Orbison and Tom Petty. On the first day of recording their debut album, Harrison's reported to have said, We know that you're Bob Dylan and everything, but we're going to just treat you and talk to you like we would anybody else. Dylan replied, well, great. Believe it or not, I'm in awe of you guys, and it's the same for me. They might have all been superstars in their own right, but at heart, they were all just good buddies who enjoyed making music together. Jenny Lewis was the singer and guitarist in the band Rilo Kylie that she formed with her then boyfriend Blake Sennett. Rilo Kylie's third album, More Adventurous, foregrounded Lewis's vocals and songwriting and included the hit song Portions for Foxes. Rilo Kylie released one more album, Under the Blacklight, before disbanding. Lewis recorded her first solo album, Rabbit Fur Coat, at the invitation of Connor Oberst for his Team Love label. Her third, The Voyager, is in my mind a perfect album. Her vocals are better than ever, her lyrics poignant and moving, and her songwriting has matured significantly since the Rilo Kylie days. I challenge you to listen to She's Not Me and not be moved. I believe she's one of the great American songwriters and is criminally underrated. She recently supported Harry Styles on his world tour, another example of going solo, doing wonders for your career. So I expect she'll have won over a whole new generation of fans. Some artists have such presence and strength of vision that they really can't be anything other than solo. Neil Young, one of the greatest songwriters of this or any era, has been in two groups, Buffalo Springfield and Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. His presence both elevated their music to new heights and caused irreparable rifts. Buffalo Springfield, the group he formed with Bruce Palmer, Dewey Martin, Stephen Stills and Richie Fury, barely lasted one album before fracturing. Stills and Young, both forceful personalities, clashed over the direction of the band. They limped on to fulfil contractual agreements before disbanding. While Young pursued his solo career, Stills formed the supergroup Crosby, Stills and Nash with his friends David Crosby and Graham Nash, who had discovered that their unique mix of vocal harmonies had a magical effect on listeners. They were all troublemakers in their respective bands. Nash had left the Hollies out of creative frustration, and Crosby's ego and behaviour had got him kicked out of the birds. In a 2014 interview, Graham Nash remarked, whatever sound Crosby, Sills and Nash has was born in 30 seconds. That's how long it took us to harmonise. 
Aiming for a beefed-up sound for when they toured, their label boss suggested drafting in Young to play lead guitar and keyboards. Young accepted, but only if he got equal billing, and Crosby, Stills and Nash became Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Sadly, although there was so much genius there, trouble was ahead. The band set out on a four-leg, 39-date tour that ended with three European concerts in 1970. Stills and Young had an incredible on-stage chemistry, and their combative guitar clashes were the stuff of legend. Their album, Deja Vu, remains the highest-selling album of each member's career. But the cracks began to show. Tempers frayed and egos took control. Stills was temporarily fired after embarking on a surprise extended solo set mid-concert because he'd heard Bob Dylan was in the audience. The band took time apart, each releasing solo albums. Young's albums after The Gold Rush and Harvest made him a huge star. The group reformed, split, toured, split again. Crosby and Young had a serious falling out over a comment Crosby made about Young's new partner, with Young saying they'd never play together again. In 2021, in an interview for CBS News, Nash said, When that silver thread that connects a band gets broken, it's very difficult to glue the ends together. A reunion, while unlikely, remains on the cards. Which leads me on to Eagles and their drummer Don Henley. Eagles came about as a collection of musicians who'd been in various bands that never quite worked out. Penniless, frustrated and ready to quit music, Glenn Fry, Don Henley, Bernie Leiden and Randy Meisner were hired to play as a backing band for Linda Ronstadt. Together, they realised they had something magical. Ronstadt knew that too and set them free to do their own thing. Worldwide success followed and they became one of the biggest bands of all time, selling well over 200 million records. Henley and Fry emerged as the lead songwriters, pushing the other members aside. Bernie Leiden, frustrated at their musical direction, left the band after pouring a beer over Glenn Fry's head. He was replaced by Joe Walsh. The juggernaut momentum behind Hotel California, the subsequent world tour, the pressure to rush record a follow-up, brought tensions within the band to breaking point. Randy Meisner left the band in 1977, complaining of stomach problems exacerbated by 11 months of touring. During a 1980 benefit concert for California Senator Alan Cranston, Felder and Fry spent the entire show threatening to fight each other. Only three more songs until I kick your ass, pal, Fry recalled Felder telling him towards the end of the set. Unsurprisingly, the band went on hiatus and solo projects began. And in my opinion, in the battle of the solo careers, Don Henley comes out on top. He had huge hits with iconic tunes like Boys of Summer, Dirty Laundry, and the incredible album The End of the Innocents, ranked as one of Rolling Stone's best albums of all time. I challenge you to find a more moving song than The Heart of the Matter. It's just perfect. Eagles reformed, of course, in various iterations, embarking on the Hell Freezes Over tour, and even touring as recently as 2022, with Glenn Fry's son standing in after the singer's death in 2016. A documentary, The History of the Eagles, was released in 2013, and fired guitarist Don Felder criticised the documentary, saying it downplayed his contributions to the group. Responding, Henley said, The thing about bands is you have to have leaders in a band. Everybody can't be on equal footing. It's like a football team. Somebody's got to be the quarterback. Somebody's got to snap the ball. Somebody's got to run with the ball. Somebody's got to block. If people play their positions and play their strengths, everything turns out well. The whole is greater than the sum of the parts. And there are many bands that are an example of that. He's right. Playing with others can elevate your craft to new levels and bring success unimaginable as a solo player. But You'll never know how someone will react when they're handed the ball. Maybe they'll run with it. Maybe they'll pass it. To find out, you have to play the game. Okay, thank you for watching and getting to the end of this video. Please subscribe to the channel. It really, really helps me out. And for more news and exclusive updates, sign up to my newsletter. There's a link in the description. I've actually also just released a new lecture on my course site titled How I Built My YouTube Channel. If you want to learn more about my journey, but as always, I'll be seeing you here very, very soon.